Blessed be you, God's saints in light. Blessed be you, the people of First Lutheran Church, the heart of Christ in the heart of this city. Blessed be you as we gather on this day in Jesus' name, remembering all the saints who have gone before us, remembering that you and we and they are a great cloud of witnesses for God's glory in the world, for God's good news of forgiveness, mercy, and freedom. Blessed be you. Today as we worship, we have many things to consider, not the least of which is the various opportunities to remember the saints. As we do so, we, uh, I invite you to look in the back of the bulletin. We are in the midst of a three-part uh, uh, series on uh, walking, listening, and giving with Jesus. Three different testimonies, a marvelous gift of sharing from Elizabeth Connolly last week about what it means for her to give and to challenge us. Today we hear from Sean Travers, and then I'm looking forward very much to that, and then from uh, David Pohl next week. In this season of generosity inspired by the saints, we hear again over and over what it means to be a saint of God baptized in his word. There's opportunities for online worship during the week and for study. There's opportunity next Friday, and I encourage you and hope that you'll come and be supportive of the music and arts ministry here at first as we step into a new time, a new chapter in our life together. Now that we are, have the capacity to do some new things out on the patio, there's going to be a special celebration next Friday. Uh, and uh, you could, Bill, do you have any more to say about that? It'll just be a really fun night. The doors of the patio will be open at 5.30. We've got some really incredible singers that night. At 7 o'clock, Bill Wright is doing a special reading during this one of Stephen Sondheim's song from Sunday in the Park with George, and also a couple of things from Ashley Cutright, who's really fabulous, and of course, Omari. Yay. And Jan is going to close the night with a really fun sing-along song. So it's going to be a really, really fun night. So I hope you can please be, come. Please come and enjoy the festivities here on the patio. Uh, be supportive of the ministry. And it's a great opportunity for you to bring a friend or two or five. Uh, we can handle them. Lastly, uh, not the last, but uh, the last thing I'm going to share this morning in, in, by way of announcements is that... Um, um, we had the uh, Congregation Vitality Survey, which you took in person here over the course of a couple Sundays. Uh, everyone else we trust got in the mail, a chance to return it. Today is the, sort of the deadline for that. Those results are the surveys then mailed tomorrow off to Baylor University for tabulation, and we're looking for three weeks to a month before they come back, and then we'll be uh, digesting that information and sharing out with you kind of how we sit and where we're gonna be looking to grow into the future here in our vitality as God's people uh, with the help of our synod and, and others. Let me uh, begin now with just a word of prayer. Help me shift myself into the worship time for all saints. Please join me. Good and gracious God, we give thanks for this day, for its beauty and light, for the goodness of your creation, the same creation which sustained and nourished all the saints of all times and all places. God, your son Jesus heard these same birds, felt the same warmth of the sun, the same coolness of the breeze. And yet your world has changed with the noise of the city, different kinds of noises. And yet through all that time and space, your saints have come and gone, come from you and gone back to you. We give thanks for their lives of faith and witness. And ask this day, as we remember those saints in our lives particularly, that you continue to use them to inspire and sustain us when we grow weary and when we wonder what we shall do. Help us turn to them as they lead by their example. 
as they follow you. Bless our time of worship now as we sing and pray and praise, as we ponder and delight in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. This cross, candle, receptacle, place to put candles, was created for us last Lent by Dan Schongard. As you come forward and see it from this view, you will note that it's in the shape of the cross that is above and to the left of the altar in the sanctuary. It's exactly the same dimensions. Every time I see it, I think, is that cross on the wall really this big? But it is. And there's room for you today, among other things, besides the pictures that we have over there, to remember a saint. And there's no designated time in worship to light these candles. But as the Spirit moves your body to stand and to come forward, whether it's during the singing of a hymn, the reading of scripture, the speaking of a prayer, in the middle of my message during or after communion, come and light a candle. Today I light this in particular for my father who died just before I came here. And I know would have been exceedingly pleased and proud that I'm at a church that is so dedicated to serving people on the margins. I'm using flame. Am I still on? Using this flame today to light a candle for, oh, see if we can get it, stay lit. If any of these candles burn out, that's not a sign. It's just a signal that we didn't get uh, glass wind protectors. That's for Ruth Maxwell, who passed this last year at the age of 95. A servant of God, a member of this community of faith, a woman of prayer, and as we'll hear later, a lover of God's people. And I light this for Pastor Ted Johns. Pastor Ted was the associate pastor here at the end of a long and distinguished career of ministry and of service. He helped develop the ministry of Taco, gave it shape and form. That was his call with his brother-in-law, Noel Estergren. And then I light this one. My mother called me yesterday. She was so excited. She'd read and then watched on the news that the USNS United States Naval ship Harvey Milk was launched into San Diego Harbor yesterday. I don't know if, I don't believe that uh, Harvey was a Christian, but he certainly was a saint. And we remember his name and his legacy and his service and how he helped change the world around him and around us by staying focused on the vision that God gave him. Would you please rise and join me in the opening dialogue for all saints. Praise the Lord, all you saints. Praise, praise him, him, all you heavenly hosts. hosts. Let us praise the name of the Lord, for, for his, his name, name only is exalted. exalted. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Isaiah, Isaiah Jeremiah, and, and all you patriarchs and prophets, and prophets. Miriam, Ruth, and Naomi, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Mary, and, and all, all you holy, holy women. women, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, James and John and all you evangelists and apostles, Stephen, Thomas, Peter, and Paul, Philip, Bartholomew, and all you holy martyrs. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. These are the saints whose robes are washed white in the blood of the Lamb. Praise the Lord. We are the saints who are the living body of Christ, the church. Praise the Lord. Oh, oh, praise, praise the, the name, name of the Lord. Lord. O oh God, the generations rise and pass away before you. 
You are the strength of those who labor. You are the rest of the blessed dead. We rejoice in the company of your saints. We remember all who have lived in faith, all who have peacefully died, and especially those most dear to us who rest in you, whose names we remember before you now. Ruth Ann Maxwell, Reverend Ted Johns, Representative Harvey Milk. Give us in time our portion with those who have trusted in you and striven to do your holy will. To your name with the church on earth and the church in heaven, we ascribe all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue in a practice of remembering the laments of our hearts and our community before God. If you uh, choose, we are made a decision not to put the cards in the bulletin anymore, but I think maybe we should because there's been a decrease on the table before over there. Once again, anytime during worship, you're welcome. Uh, I will uh, lift these up that are in this basket at the altar, and I'll keep these in prayer at home uh, during the week. I think about the saints and lament. All the saints are engaged in some kind of lament because every single saint had to follow Christ. And when we follow Christ, we know there's what we call today pushback. Sometimes pushback means being hung upside down and disemboweled. Uh, sometimes uh, pushback means losing your position in society. Sometimes pushback means uh, being uh, criticized openly. You'll hear uh, that happening uh, to Jesus today in the scriptures. And so lament is a natural thing. I think about uh, a modern saint that you still remember is Mother Teresa. Everybody knows Mother Teresa of Calcutta is, was. After her death, her prayer book, her diary came out. Do you remember? And in it, there were laments. Do you remember that? There were her cries to God, why? And it was so odd to me, so uh, misguided, misunderstood. Uh, there was this noise in the press that somehow she was filled with doubt. They completely misunderstood her lament. But to imagine to do what she did as one of God's saints and not wonder, not wonder over and over again, but in her life, in her flesh, in her work, she just continued. But she wrote down her laments. <laughs> she lifted them up before God. Our God is a mighty God, a great God, who can, we can lift these laments to. Don't be concerned or worried in any way that it's too much for God to carry. 
Please join me now in the prayer of the day. Prayer for all saints. Almighty God, you have have knit knit your people people together together in one one communion, communion, in the mystical mystical body of your Son, Son, Jesus Christ Christ our Lord. Lord. Grant us grace grace to follow follow your blessed saints saints in lives of faith and and commitment, and and to to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our worship continues with the reading of God's word for us this day. Reading is from the Hebrew Scriptures. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hmm. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it the world and those who dwell therein. For the the Lord Lord has has founded founded it upon the seas and established it upon the the rivers. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord and who may stand in God's holy place? Those Those of of innocent hands and purity of heart who do not swear swear on God's being, being, nor do they pledge by what is false. They shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of their salvation. Such Such is is the generation generation of those those who seek you, O Lord, of those those who who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is is this this King King of glory? glory? The Lord Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord Lord, mighty in battle. battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this this King of glory? glory? Truly, Truly, the Lord Lord of hosts is the King King of glory. The epistle lesson is from Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who is seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Please rise for the gospel acclamation.
to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The Holy Gospel for this All Saints Sunday comes to us from the 11th chapter of St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. And when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, well, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who have opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? And then Jesus again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? And so they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, and his hands and his feet were bound with strips of cloth, and his face was wrapped in cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. <coughs> Grace to you and peace. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, would you please pray with me? Gracious God, as we hear your word for us this day, this reminder that there is a feast of fat things and well-aged wine ready to be served by you. As we hear that you make all things new, that there is a new Jerusalem. And as we hear you call to your friend, come out, and that new life is real. I ask that you continue to surround us with your word, infuse us with your spirit, inspire us with those around us who indeed are the saints, those who are living now and those who have gone before, <coughs> that we might become your saints for this time and place. I ask for your Holy Spirit's presence for my lips, that what I speak might be for you, to be with all who hear that we might know your will for us this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. She raised four children, four daughters. All the while, she was a registered nurse. Four daughters working full time as a nurse and still found time to volunteer for the Easter Seal Society caring for orthopedic impaired children and their families. Sound saintly to you? <laughs> yes. Ruth was. Ruth, as she came here to San Diego, found out first, partly because it was a Lutheran church, but almost more so because it was a church that was active in serving those who are marginalized in society. Service. Service, service is a hallmark of the saints. Over and over and over, we hear again and again that service is God's call.
Reverend Ted Johns. Upon ordination, went to Staunton, Massachusetts, where he took his first call and developed a new mission church. He then served as a Navy chaplain, congregations in Phoenix, Minneapolis, Houston, London, and San Diego. He was a man of spiritual strength. He found his calling to serve from his intense desire to serve others. He spent his life giving back and doing his part to improve our world. He worked in numerous philanthropic organizations, had an intense love for local organizations, of which being a Rotarian and a member of Alcoholics Anonymous were among the most important. The next part tripped me up. He traveled the globe. I said, oh, travel. Well, but <laughs> listen to what he did when he traveled. <laughs> he went to the poorest of the poor in third world countries. Vacation getaways. <laughs> he traveled the globe helping the poorest of the poor in third world countries. Authentic, genuine, and caring, the words often described, Pastor Ted. Service, service and love for others is always a hallmark of the saints. There is much to read and to know. There's movies about Harvey Milk, so I'm not going to go into his whole story. But I found this intriguing for us today. His friend and uh, campaign manager for the campaign that won him the spot on the uh, board, City Board of Supervisors in San Francisco, uh, Ann Cronenberg, wrote of him, what set Harvey apart from you and me was that he was a visionary. He imagined a righteous world inside his soul and then he set about to create it for real, for all of us. What set him apart was that he captured a vision and then set about to make it real for everyone. A righteous world. The saints, in our tradition, in our understanding, are us. We are the saints of God. When we are baptized, we become justified. We are saints, and all the saints were sinners. They were in human form, in flesh, <laughs> saints and sinners. Some people think I'm making a joke when I say good morning saints and good morning sinners, but it's deadly serious to me. Most days I'm more aware of the sinner part than the saint part. How I have failed my family, my friends, and you. How I'm not living up even to my own expectations, much less others or God's. Fair expectations, often. But I find comfort in the scriptures and comfort in the lives of the saints that I see represented here because I know, at least theoretically, I'm not different. The saints are you and all of us. And then we give a title of saint to those who are extraordinary, but they're not different from us in any substantive way. They are not different from any of us in any substantive way, only that they allowed themselves to be captivated by a vision and decided to work it out. Ruth Ann was captivated by Easter seals and the work they did, and she worked it out while raising her children, making each of those daughters feel special about themselves. It was so marvelous. Her funeral service was Paul and Bill and I were able to be there, and you might remember how each, and it was during COVID, so it was, it was like a lockdown funeral. But each daughter except for the first. <laughs> the oldest got all the new clothes. And then it 
they, they gave their testimony in order. And the youngest said, I grew up in leftovers. But then she gave the strongest testimony of how her mother, in, in the midst of all that she was doing, made her feel extraordinarily special. Pierced her heart and saw what was unique about her, and Ruth nourished it, and her father nourished it. And so she, they raised four healthy, strong daughters in the world, even with hand-me-downs. Today, we are blessed. I am blessed. You are blessed that we have hand-me-downs. Each of these souls, saints, represent... Oh, I can't get too close, so I'll just... Over there. It's called feedback. I can't... Um, but, but I'm living on the hand-me-downs of my ancestors and the saints who went before. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. I look to them. I don't look to everything that they did, but the stuff that fits the scriptures. And today I want to end with the scriptures and end with a prayer. Isaiah reminds us that there is a feast of fat things that is our inheritance, that God comes, wipes away the tears. It is God who does all that, and we have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. I love the fact that part of being a saint is waiting on the Lord. And I love that word wait because there's at least two connotations. One is kind of waiting, like be patient waiting. To know that, there's this, that God is coming and we have to wait. But then there's the other connotation of waiting, which is to be of service those who wait upon the Lord, those who serve the Lord, shall enjoy. The feast is served for everybody, but the people who really enjoy it are the ones who waited. And then Revelation begins and ends a section with a new heaven and a new earth, and then God says, I will make all things new. And then the Gospel of John. Mary comes and makes this bold pronouncement, this bold statement of faith, of courage, of confidence. And it can be read in one of two ways. It could be read as a complaint, as a lament. If you had been here, he wouldn't have died. Or it can also be read in the same breath, I know who you are. And I know that if you had shown up, Lord, my brother wouldn't have died. I have that much confidence in you. The saints have confidence in each of us. Part of these, a, a gift from these saints is their confidence in you. They're important to us because they trusted in each of us to do God's will. I love the fact that, that when Jesus began to weep, that part of the crowd said, oh, look how much he loved them. And in the same breath, the other part of the crowd said, man, what a loser. If he had been here, this wouldn't have happened. That there's always in the crowd both voices. Can't lose for winning, and you can't win for losing. I love the fact that Lazarus did nothing. He did less than nothing. I love that Jesus comes and raises the dead. Mary and Martha and Lazarus did not go to Barnes and Noble or Amazon and get any self-help books. They did not have filled with anxiety about what they should have done. They were just weeping and dead. And God came into their lives and made all things new. The saints know this and believe this. In Jesus' name, amen.
At this time, and I'm sorry we put the table, I was going to, well, I'm going to do it from here. I want you to go back to the beginning of your bulletin. And it says the time of remembrance. This is uh, the prayer is from the commendation section of the funeral service for the burial of the dead. And whether you've lit, the, lit a candle over here or brought a picture, if you didn't bring a picture, you can imagine a picture of, of a saint in your life who is here. And to say their name out loud, one or two or three or four or five, I'm going to share my grandparents' name and my father's name and my dear friend Frank's name. Saints who trusted me and believed in me. Instead of Ruth Ann and Ted. So let's read that prayer together. Say names together. And when it all quiets down, I'll end it. Let us pray. O oh God, the generations rise and pass away before you. You are the strength of those who labor. You are the rest of the blessed dead. We rejoice in the company of your saints. We remember all who have lived in faith, all who have peacefully died, and especially those most dear to us who rest in you, whose names we remember before you now. For Gladys and Dawn, for Grant and Pat, for Robert and Frank, Thank you for God for the lives that touched ours, the lives that inspire us, the lives that sustain us and help us to see a vision of your kingdom. Let us continue the work that you've put before us. And now, Lord, give us in time our portion with those who have trusted in you and striven to do your holy will. To your name with the church on earth, the church in heaven, we ascribe all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Ye watchers and ye holy ones.
eternal God. You hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. you for abundant harvests and the goodness of creation. Create communities of care for your earth so that all land, water, and soil will be celebrated and cherished by future generations of saints. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of peace, we give you thanks for nations of peace that serve as a refuge for all whose homelands are afflicted with violence. Strengthen those who continue to work for peace and support all veterans who carry the scars of war. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of healing, we give you thanks for healthcare workers who labor around the clock to answer cries for help. Bring wholeness to all who struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, depression, addiction, and all who long for healing in any way. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of justice, we praise you for our taco ministry and for all who share meals that bring people together for nourishment and fellowship. Bring the chefs, bakers, servers, dishwashers, volunteers and staff who make those ministries possible. Bless them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. And for what else do the people of God pray? Gracious God, we wonder why is it that people die at concerts? There to celebrate and to come out of COVID lockdown to dance and to sing and find themselves and loved ones crushed. Why do those kind of tragedies happen, God? And God, for those that we love, those close to us who mentor us, especially today, Jeff and Brad, that we feel left alone. Why do we feel abandoned, God? God of all ages, we give you thanks for the saints of this congregation who have inspired, challenged, loved, and taught us. Wipe away our tears and lead us by their example until we feast together on your holy mountain. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our protection and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. to making the sign of the cross. Today, as we say the creed, when we affirm that we believe in the resurrection of the body, that is the time to make the sign of the cross because we've been sealed by that cross and those who we remember as saints today live again by that cross. 
we join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed, making ancient words come alive and relevant today as we say the word, I. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. My pleasure to invite uh, Dr. Sean Travers forward to share with us a testimony. Howdy. Okay, we'll start with Texas Cultural Competency 101. So when someone oh. says howdy from Texas, then you say howdy back. You ready? I'm gonna count of three, one, two, three, howdy. Howdy. Yay. <laughs> That's good too. That's a nice response. Walk with Jesus. Three stories. One, I was born Lutheran, baptized Lutheran, raised Lutheran, First Communion Lutheran, confirmed Lutheran, and I went to California Lutheran University. The goal was not clapping. Howdy, yeah, <laughs> nice. In all that time, I watched my mother every week write a check and put it in an envelope, the envelope for that week, because they were numbered, 52 on envelopes, with sometimes a couple extra ones thrown in there over Lent and Advent. Sometimes I got to lick the envelope, and we put it in the offering plate. It's what Lutherans did. It was my understanding of being Lutheran. We gave weekly. I've never had a job that paid me weekly. I give monthly. <laughs> My parents taught me to give. It felt like the Lutheran thing. Story number two. At California Lutheran University, the church struggled with its commitment to LGBTQIA plus people. This was in the early 90s. And I left the church for over a decade. I did not go to church. And I walked with Jesus in different ways. I went to a, the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship, and I gave money to things that I knew made a difference regularly throughout all that time because that's kind of what I was taught to do. It didn't compete, because at that time I wasn't giving to the church, but it was the tradition I upheld. Story number three. I imagine, oh, I do tap my foot, don't I? Well, you're, but, but you're not doing it this way. Mm. When you were reading the scripture, you were mm. you were kind of kind of kind of convicting me. <laughs> this is more like, you know, a friendly. Okay. <laughs> He's pointed out my boots before. Story number 3. Walking with Jesus. When I imagine that final walk with Jesus, I imagine I won't carry my house on my back or my furniture or my bank account or my things or my possessions. I imagine that 
I will have given that all away when it's time for that final walk. Because it's what I was taught to do by my parents, even when I left the church to give to other things that I have passion about, that my walk with Jesus is about giving and giving generously. And so I ask that in your walk with Jesus, you figure out how you want to give generously. I'll be doing the same thing. This week, you'll get a letter from me. It will say, howdy. It will inquire about your walk with Jesus. And I hope that you will continue to ponder what you will give when you are asked. Amen. We continue to give thanks for the ways that people give, that you give, in the offering plate, through the mail, or online. We give thanks for the generosity of your heart and the inspiration of your life. Let us share together the offering prayer for this day. Holy God, Holy God the, the earth, earth is, is yours and everything, everything in it. In it. Yet, Yet you, you have, have chosen, chosen to dwell among your creatures. creatures. Come among, among us now in these gifts, gifts of bread and wine and strengthen and us to be your body for the, for the world through, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. There was a shift in our schedule and I do not have, as you see, an assisting minister who would have asked someone to help with communion. I need uh, two souls who will help uh, serve communion by taking the, the uh, communion element off the altar and then place it on the onto the uh, stool. Who might help? Ruth? Okay, you just stand there and one other and oh beautiful. Wait right there. Please rise. Peace of the Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to, the, to Lord. the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give our thanks and, and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, and might heaven and, and earth, earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, O Lord, and great is your majesty. All the saints in heaven and on earth sing your praise of your eternal glory. For in the beginning you prepared the worlds for your holy word, so that what is seen is made from things that are not visible. You laid out your holy plan of creation and redemption, so that all who might know that you, have, that you would have faith, not in things seen, not in, but in things not seen. By faith, Noah and his family built the ark and were saved from the flood to bring forth a new generation. By faith, Enoch of old was taken straight into heaven. By faith, Abraham and Sarah obeyed your calling and went forth from their home to a place promised but not seen, to a family promised but only later fulfilled. By faith, Moses brought forth your chosen people, the Israelites, from slavery into freedom and led them to your holy mountain to worship and receive your law. By faith, the prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah held fast to your promise of a Messiah who would come to save either your people from their sin. By faith, Mary and Joseph awaited the day of your promise until you brought forth that Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, 
In him is the fulfillment of the faith and hope of all the saints. In him is our salvation won and your love revealed. And so we remember on the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat, this is my body, broken and given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after that supper, he took the cup, and again he gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in heaven and on earth, O God, the saints and angels unite around your holy altar to proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We remember and hold fast to Christ's examples of faith and life as the saints before us have done. We remember his living among outcasts and sinners, his concern for the poor, his life of prayer and worship, his teachings about your love but chiefly remember his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, his promise to come again to raise us and all the faithful departed to live together eternally in fellowship with him in his heavenly kingdom. Send now your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine that they might become the body and the blood of him who is the hope and salvation of the living and the dead. Send your Holy Spirit upon us that we might know his presence in these gifts and through them be united in prayer and praise with all those who have gone before us. With this feast, join us in one holy communion of saints, one great cloud of witnesses with Peter and Paul, John and Mary, and all the blessed dead whose lives of faith in unseen things continue to inspire us. As together we lift our voices in praise to you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in eternal glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you have taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power, and the glory are yours, now now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, this is the feast of God's grace, his love prepared for you, God's people whom he loves. Please be seated, and then come as you are, and as you are able, to this table. Body of shed for you, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, broken and shed for you, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, broken and shed for you, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, broken and shed for you, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, broken and shed for you.
And now may the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. 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 Before we go, I want to give thanks again for all who come early to set up. Joe, Dan, Rebecca, Brian, for our musicians, for gathering to lead us in worship each Sunday out in this place. Uh, it means so much. I came today and it was just this motion. It's almost become not quite ballet, but it, it, we finally figured it out. At the same time, it is getting closer to consider what it means to move inside. And uh, so uh, to that end, within the next couple of weeks, there will be a, a survey, another online survey uh, about uh, your level of comfort with being inside and timing and how to add adult education, what you used to call 1010, all that kind of thing, uh, so that we can better discern together uh, how we can gather again and at what way inside. Unfortunately, we can't do, unless more of you volunteer, we can't do inside and out on the same Sunday. Uh, it's too much. So anyway, um, thank you for uh, Dr. Travers, for your inspiration and challenge. Much appreciated. Please rise now. On this day, as we remember all the saints who have gone before us, all who are living now around us, and for you in your baptized life, may you go out confident that your lives are safe in God, Keep your hands clean and your hearts pure. Do not act falsely and do not swear deceitfully. Trust in the Lord even in the face of death and follow in the footsteps of all God's saints. And may God keep a protective eye on you. May Christ Jesus show you his grace and mercy and may the Holy Spirit give you a vision of the life of the world made new. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen.
almost had a starlight bowl moment where we were going to have to stop and then start up again. But you, but you pulled through. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God.